Italy, a country known for its rich cultural heritage, breathtaking landscapes, and centuries-old traditions, is facing a quiet crisis that is reshaping its future. In 2025, its population stands at approximately 58.5 million, a decline of 0.3% compared to the previous year. On the surface, this number might appear small, almost insignificant, but beneath the statistics lies a profound shift in demographics, economy, and national identity. This slow but steady decrease is part of a trend that has been unfolding for decades and by 2025, it has reached a stage where policymakers, economists, and even ordinary citizens can no longer ignore its implications. Unlike sudden disasters that capture global headlines, the decline of a nation's population is a silent erosion, one that subtly alters the structure of society until the change becomes irreversible. For Italy, this is not merely about fewer people. It is about the reshaping of cities, villages, industries, and even the national psyche. The roots of Italy's population decline stretch back to the late 20th century when fertility rates began to fall well below the replacement level of 2.1 children per woman. Economic challenges, changing cultural values, and shifting family structures all contributed to the trend. In the 1970s and 1980s, Italian families were already beginning to have fewer children, often stopping at one or even none. Over time, this became not just a choice, but a norm. The cost of raising a child in Italy, particularly in urban centers like Rome, Milan, and Florence, soared alongside housing prices and job insecurity. Young couples began to delay marriage and parenthood, prioritizing education, careers, and financial stability. The result was a generation entering their 30s without children and another following them with even less inclination toward large families. By the 2000s, Italy's demographic decline was becoming noticeable, especially in rural areas. Small towns in regions like Melise, Calabria, and Sicily saw their populations shrink rapidly as younger residents moved to larger cities or abroad in search of better opportunities. In many of these places, schools closed for lack of students, shops shuttered, and homes fell into disrepair. By 2025, some villages have populations where the median age is well above 60, and children are a rare sight. This imbalance between the young and the elderly is one of the most striking features of Italy's demographic crisis. It is not just that there are fewer people, but that the population is aging rapidly. The aging population poses significant challenges for Italy's economy and social systems. With fewer working age individuals, the labor force is shrinking, putting pressure on productivity and economic growth. At the same time, the number of retirees is increasing, straining the pension system and healthcare services. Italy already has one of the highest life expectancies in the world, which is a testament to its healthcare system and lifestyle, but in the context of a declining and aging population, it also means that a smaller base of workers must support a growing number of dependents. This creates fiscal challenges that are difficult to resolve without either increasing immigration, raising taxes, or cutting benefits, each of which comes with political and social resistance. Immigration has, in recent decades, been seen as one potential solution to Italy's demographic crisis. Migrants from Africa, Eastern Europe, and Asia have helped fill labor shortages and kept some small towns alive. However, immigration alone has not been enough to reverse the decline, and it has sparked political debates about integration, cultural identity, and the future of the Italian nation. Some towns have welcomed newcomers and offered incentives like free housing or financial support for families willing to move there, while others have resisted, fearing a loss of traditional culture. In 2025, immigration remains a politically charged topic with different regions and municipalities adopting drastically different approaches. 
Economically, the decline in population affects everything from housing markets to consumer spending patterns. In cities like Milan, real estate prices in central districts remain high due to demand from wealthy foreigners and investors, but in smaller towns and rural areas, property values have plummeted. Abandoned houses can be bought for a symbolic one euro, yet many remain empty because the local economy cannot support new residents. The shrinking population also affects businesses with fewer customers, local shops close, and even larger companies reconsider investments in certain regions. Public transportation services are reduced or discontinued in low-demand areas, further isolating communities and making them less attractive to potential newcomers. Culturally, the decline in population is reshaping traditions. Festivals that once brought together entire villages now struggle to find enough participants. Schools merge or shut down, ending long-standing rivalries between neighboring towns. Churches, a central part of community life in many areas, see dwindling attendance as older parishioners pass away and younger generations drift away from organized religion. The transmission of cultural heritage, from regional dialects to artisanal crafts, becomes harder when there are fewer young people to learn and carry on these traditions. Some regions are actively working to document and preserve their cultural heritage before it disappears, but preservation without living practice risks turning traditions into museum pieces rather than living customs. The Italian government has introduced various measures over the years to try to reverse or at least slow the population decline. These include financial incentives for families to have more children, tax breaks, subsidized child care, and housing programs. In some regions, couples receive direct cash payments for each child born, along with discounts on utilities and public services. However, these policies have had limited success, in part because they address the financial burden of raising children, but not the underlying cultural shifts that have made smaller families the norm. For many young Italians, the decision to have fewer or no children is tied not only to money, but also to lifestyle preferences, career ambitions, and personal freedom. Education plays a role as well. As more young Italians pursue higher education, they often delay starting families until their late 30s, at which point fertility rates naturally decline. Women, in particular, face the challenge of balancing careers with motherhood in a society where workplace flexibility is limited. Employers often fail to provide adequate maternity leave or support for working mothers, making parenthood a more difficult choice. Without structural changes to the labor market and social support systems, these barriers to family life will remain in place, regardless of financial incentives. By 2025, projections suggest that Italy's population could fall below 54 million by 2050 if current trends continue. This would not only make Italy one of the fastest shrinking countries in Europe, but also reshape its role within the European Union. A smaller population could mean less political influence, fewer seats in the European Parliament, and reduced economic clout. This is particularly concerning given that other EU countries, like France, have managed to maintain more stable population numbers through higher birth rates and more robust immigration policies. Yet, despite the seriousness of the demographic decline, Italy is also a country of resilience and adaptation. In some areas, the crisis has spurred creative solutions. Abandoned villages are being repurposed as tourist attractions, remote working hubs, or artist colonies. Agricultural regions are exploring niche markets like organic farming, wine production, and agro-tourism to attract both visitors and new residents. Tech startups and innovation hubs are emerging in unexpected places, leveraging Italy's high quality of life and relatively low cost of living outside major cities to draw in talent from abroad. These efforts may not reverse the overall trend, but they represent a form of adaptation that could help maintain vibrancy in certain communities. The question for Italy in 2025 is not just how to increase its population, but how to adapt to a smaller one. 
This means rethinking urban planning, social services, and economic strategies to match the realities of a country with fewer people. It means building infrastructure that supports an aging population, encouraging sustainable immigration policies, and finding ways to make family life more compatible with modern careers and lifestyles. Above all, it means confronting the cultural and societal attitudes toward family work and community that have contributed to the decline. The decline of Italy's population is a complex and multifaceted issue, shaped by economics, culture, politics, and personal choice. It is not a problem that can be solved overnight, and it may never be fully reversed. But by understanding the factors that have brought Italy to this point, and by crafting policies that address both the practical and cultural dimensions of the issue, there is hope that the country can navigate this demographic transformation with resilience. Italy's history is filled with moments of challenge and renewal, and while the shrinking population is a profound challenge, it also presents an opportunity to rethink and reshape the nation for the future. The Italy of 2050 may be smaller in number, but it could still be vibrant, prosperous, and deeply connected to its heritage if it chooses to adapt with foresight and determination.